ones. So today I decided to wear one of my other masks. I haven't done this in quite some time. But welcome to another installment of Odd Encounters. Um, today is going to be a little different. I know we haven't done this in quite some time. But if you have small children, they shouldn't watch this episode. Because today we're going to talk about a very touchy subject. Something I'm not, uh, I'm not proud to talk about. But at the same time, it has to be said. It has to be talked about because you guys need to know there, there's a real threat to every man and woman on this earth. And it's one of those threats that the Bible says something completely different about than everything else. So... With that being said, uh, welcome to Odd Encounters. Grab your Bible and your blankie. Let's get a little spooky. Uh, before we start, we're going um, to move this camera here. I feel like, I feel like it would be better right here. So before we start, we're going to read, just like before, if you've watched any before, if you haven't, we're going to always read, if this is your first time, we're always going to read the same Bible verse Romans 10 13 okay and the reason being is because when it comes to dealing with stuff that is demonic there's only one thing one thing that can save you one thing that gets uh, that, that defeats them every time and that uh <laughs> Let me tell you, that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this Bible verse, Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Like, that's amazing. That's amazing. Why? Because it's true. And I've experienced this. Um, anytime I was pagan... And practicing witchcraft anytime I was atheist anytime that just throughout my entire life I always kind of believed in God and the name of Jesus that's what would end everything there's no crystals no sage no blood that there's, there's nothing you can do but if you call upon the name of Jesus my man comes through so with that being said, <clears throat> today's episode is about lust. Um, hmm. Again, I go back to the fact that I'm not proud of this, but I have to show you what I've seen. I have to share my experience, my testimony on this, because... As you look around our world and our country right now, everybody's dealing with it. Everybody's messed up. You got um, men using special pills younger and younger because stuff doesn't really work. You, you're, you've got women doing all kinds of terrible things with themselves. You've got men degrading themselves <sighs> you got a lot of stuff going on right now and so I'd like to turn and, and I've got my Bible right here um, so if you see me looking down reading that's what I'm doing there's a Bible right here hey, we getting it in so Matthew 5 27 and 28 and let's uh, turn with me to that Matthew five twenty seven and twenty eight, and then from there, after 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 a couple verses, I'm gonna tell you my story, okay? Because it, it was uh, that is something weird. Like God never thought in my life I'd have an experience like this, but God laid it on me. 
Let's see. What did I say? Ma Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. And that's where we'll start. And then I got a couple pages to go back here. Matthew 5, 27. But I say, un, I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Tippy, what does that mean? Even your thoughts are evil. That's what that means. You didn't say it out loud. You just looked and you're like, mm, it's bad. That's that's lust right there. That's your thoughts. You know, we got a lot of people nowadays. Oh well, well the action, the action is what eve is what's evil. You know what I mean? Don't do it. Just you know, suppress your thoughts or deal with them. No, Jesus, he, with this verse right here, clearly states, even your thoughts. If you look upon somebody or something, um, <laughs> what is not natural inside the covenant of God when it comes to creation, with a man and a woman, husband and wife, anything outside of that is evil. God did not create us to do all kinds of weird, weird, lewd things. No, God created us to be Man, woman, husband, wife, recreate that way. So anything outside of that, well, I'm sorry to tell you, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. So anyway, let's continue. What was it? And, and verse 28. 28 says, But I say unto you that whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And that's... That's where he pieces that together. So don't let these churches or these people tell you, oh, it's, it's okay that you're attracted to men, or it's okay that you're attracted to women, or it's okay you're attracted to animals or children, as long as you don't do it. Don't physically, no. Stop. Stop right there. Jesus strictly states, your thoughts are just as bad as doing them. Are just as as bad as doing them. And if you have these thoughts or feelings, you probably should go seek help. A church, somebody you can talk to, somebody that'll pray with you. Because they're not they're not as good as you know, they're they're just the same. It's the same thing. Okay, and then we're gonna go to Matthew again, chapter seven. <laughs> Twenty one and twenty three. Twenty one through twenty three. Matthew chapter seven. Twenty one through twenty three. And that says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does. Wait. Yeah. Kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will de uh, declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And the reason why I'm smashing these two together, if your thoughts are just as bad as doing the action, you're going to end up one of these people. Lord, didn't I do this? Lord, didn't I do that? No. It, it starts It starts with you. You know, it starts with the way we do things, okay? It starts with... Every sin starts with a thought. I'm going to get drunk today. I'm going to watch some terrible things today. I'm going to do some terrible things today. It starts with us. And it starts with our thoughts. And that verse before. Granted. He used sex. As an example. 
were our thoughts. But it's true. Even says the same thing about murder. You, sh you have heard, for you have heard, thou shalt not murder. But anybody who looks at their brother and says Raka is guilty of committing murder. Okay, now that's just me quoting. Go look it up. It's it's not too long after the the first Matthew verse we just read. It, it's it's your thoughts. Everything starts with thought. You don't just wake up and do stuff. You wake up, think, ah, I'm gonna go eat. Ah, I gotta go to the bathroom. Ah, I gotta do this. Okay. So with that being said, that ties into our odd encounter today because our thoughts are very much so what leads good and evil in our the, the balance in our lives the good and evil okay if we're not on top of our thoughts we're we're leaving ourselves out to the dogs and they will chew us and they will devour us and that's when we get into trouble Point blank. So with that being said, we're going to go to one more, and then I'm going to start my story. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Now, perversion, lust, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not like other sins. And I'll tell you why. Um, when I became pagan, I've kind of had of a, a, a really messed up life sexually. Uh, parents did terrible stuff to us. Other family members did terrible stuff to us. So I haven't had a very gracious life but the Bible explains that you know some sins are uh, and that, I mean sin is sin to God all day every day uh, he can't stand it he's perfect he's sinless okay but some sins as he explains it to us humans to God sin is sin to us we like to level things. We like to, like, oh, he just stole something. Oh, he punched somebody in the face. Oh, he raped somebody. Oh, he killed somebody. Okay. So God explains it to us in our own, you know, leveling. To him, all is equal. But to us, some things are, you know, and... Sexual immorality, sexual sin, perversion, lust, whatever you call it. Whatever you want to say at the end of the day. Anything outside the marriage of a man and a woman. Anything outside of that. To God, is sex. It's, it's sin. It's sinful. If you're not married, you're doing it wrong. That's how God looks at it. Okay? So this verse... God explains it to us on our own level. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. And 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 it's the only one that says flee or run. Okay? So here we go. Where is it? Flee from sexual immorality. Every man or every sin that a man does outside the body is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. And we know that God made us a temple. So, man to man, woman to woman, another man's wife, another woman's husband, an animal, a child yourself okay don't let some christians tell you oh it's not masturbation is not wrong 
That's a lie. In his room. It's outside of the marriage of a man and a woman. That is what God permitted us. But it's said to flee. It's said to run. And I can, myself can tell you that sex has always, always done really terrible things for my life. Always got me in trouble. Made me somebody who I wasn't. Okay. I still struggle. I, everybody struggles. But. I'm nowhere near as bad as I was. Like God. Hallelujah. God brought me out of, out of crazy things people. And that begins our story. You're supposed to run. You're supposed to flee. It's crazy. Because think about it. Sex will make people do crazy things. I know that firsthand. Especially with my last girlfriend. But that's another story. So. One night I come home. And I go to bed. Now I live with my aunt and cousin. Well they live with me. And. My aunt's this wonderful person. She's a uh, bullheaded, stubborn, sarcastic, ball of joy. Like I love her cooking. I love to joke around with her. She's she's awesome. She's a really good person. And I wouldn't have depicted her in this way, but this is how this um, outer body experience went. And at first it felt like a dream, but then some stuff kind of went on. But anyway, so I was asleep and I woke up in this giant studio. It's a big studio, kind of a uh, ball diamond shaped, you know what I mean? And it had a stage, but had steps that led down to a lower stage where a bed and a bunch of dirty toys were laying around and whatnot. And I was like, what the heck? You know, I was like, what am I doing here? And then I looked over, and as the, as the steps went up, there was a camera. Right? And there stood my aunt next to the camera. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what what is this place? And she's like, oh, you, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you, I'm, I'm doing pornography now. I'm doing adult videos. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah. And then turned around. And as I watched her walk away diagonally from the camera, she went through these doors along the wall of this room. It was double doors. She went through them. I'm sitting there. I'm like, what the heck just happened? Okay. And I'm talking like gray walls, gray floor, and then like this big fluffy bed, blankets, this camera, like, you know, something you would see in like Hollywood or whatnot, like one of those kind of cameras. There were no windows in the room, and it was just, just a soundproof studio, you know. I don't know what else to call it. But anyway... She walked out of the room, and I looked back at the camera, and then I looked down at the bed. And that is when I seen this. Like, what, what was that? And we locked eyeballs for a, a second or two, and I was like, Jesus, and it growled. And when it growled at me, like, it was this most nasty guttural, like, I couldn't even get that low. And I, I love doing death metal vocals, but I could not get that low. This thing growled at me, and it shot through me. I felt energy, I felt my soul, like, it, it hurt, but, like, it wasn't like a physical hurt. It just, like, <gasps> like, you know what I mean? I felt a piece of me leave. 
a little bit. And I said Jesus again, and poof, he was gone. And I woke up in my bed. Now, I didn't know what to make of it, so I went to work the next day. And I've been talking to the guy that works next to me about Jesus, about God, you know, about the world, zombies, all that good stuff, you know, just, I, I befriended somebody, and I told him about my dream, and he's like, hey, maybe you should, uh, stay away from, like, porn and stuff, and I, I it kind of hit me, and I'm like, like, how did he know I was going to? Like, how did he know I had looked at stuff that morning before that night when I had this experience? I'm not proud to admit that, people. I, I will say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, but I'm not perfect. And I struggle with a lot of things, but... For every evil you can think of, there is a demon, and that is the demon. That is the demon of lust and perversion. I don't know if you noticed, but when you look at that picture, notice he's got a nun hat on and a male Catholic robe. They are messed up. They are not pretty to look at. And they are very real. And we would love to know if you've had an experience with something similar or seen something similar. Um, let us know in the comments. Or you can come to Facebook, Odd Street Beats. We got a group page. We'd love to have you. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to talk to you. So just, you know, come over and check us out. But, again, if you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, you will be saved, ladies and gentlemen. You will be saved. And... We hope you uh, guys enjoyed. There will be more. We've got a lot more coming. I've got a lot more stories. Uh, tons. I've just been on hiatus here lately. So come check out Odd Street Beats on YouTube, on Facebook. We have a main page and then we have a group page on Facebook. We also have an Instagram where we post all our art. So check us out. Let us know in the comments. Talk to us. Love to answer questions. Love to talk to you. And until next time, may the oddness guide thee.